Hey, this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the moving average convergence divergence, otherwise known as the MACD indicator, which you can find on TradingView. It is one of the built in indicators, so if you want to search for it, you can just type in MACD and it'll be the first result uh, as a built-in indicator and you can click to add it i've already done that and it is down here on the chart you can see it consists of two lines the uh, blue line being the macd line and the orange line being a signal line and i'll explain to you what this means in just a moment and there's a histogram which shows the difference between these two lines and of course i'll go in and show you more about this but as part of this series, we are going to discuss in detail the calculation for the MACD so you can kind of understand why uh, the movements in the indicator happen and also kind of how you can anticipate what's going on because you know how it's calculated. So really to get started, uh, I want to show you a definition for it. Uh, that way you can see exactly what I'm talking about first of all. And this is a reference to Investopedia. I'll put this in the description of the video so you can have a link to it as well. But the moving average convergence divergence is a trend following momentum indicator that shows the relationship between two moving averages of the securities price. Now I am just reading this from the site. That's because they do a really good job of explaining it. Uh, the MACD is calculated by subtracting the 26 period exponential moving average from the 12 period EMA. Now if you're curious what an EMA is, I have another video about that in this same series. So you can go back and look at that video. But basically it's just a moving average of the price uh, that's weighted more heavily on the newest candles. So. If you're interested in that, please go look back at that video. Otherwise, we're going to continue on just kind of assuming you know what an EMA is. The result of that calculation, the difference between those two, is the MACD line. And then you have a nine period exponential moving average of that MACD line, which is your signal line, which is also plotted on the same chart. And those can both be used to trigger buy and sell signals for you and this article will show you uh, kind of how you can do that and we'll discuss a little bit of that later after we talk about the calculation itself and uh, the MACD can have many different types of signals it's not just whether or not the two lines cross over or how the histogram moves so we'll, we'll discuss that in just a moment but for now let's go ahead and take a look at how this is actually calculated so the first thing you'll notice is we have to have a 12 period and a 26 period EMA. So I've added those exponential moving averages to our charts, but you'll notice here that the MACD, those numbers are very small compared to what we see on our actual chart. And I know you can't really see those, so let me move my camera here. There you go. You can see these numbers are much smaller, 400, uh, 200, uh, compared to the scale of 10,000 here. So there's uh, obviously something that makes them much smaller, and that is just because, as I said before, you subtract the 26 period, which is the blue line here, from the 12 period, and you'll get the orange line down here, which is the MACD line. And I've actually got uh, an indicator here that we're going to code that's going to be the exact same as this, uh, minus some of the coloring on the histogram and the coloring on the lines. but it'll show you exactly how this is done. So I'm going to bring up the source code. We're actually going to go ahead and get rid of the built-in MACD indicator because we're going to build our own. And right now, you can see I've already coded all of it and I've just commented out the code that uh, we haven't shown on the screen yet. So the first thing we do, of course, is calculate our EMA 12 and our EMA 26. And we've plotted just the EMA 12. So let's actually change this and I want those lines to match what's on the actual charts. So I'll change that to blue. We'll save that change and so now we're plotting both of these lines. You can see the numbers here and here, blue and white, should match here and here and they do. So now we have our 12 and our 26 period EMA plotted on the chart, but that's not what the MACD is. The MACD is the difference of the uh, 26 period from the 12. So we're going to go ahead and comment those back out. And we've calculated the MACD by subtracting the 26 period EMA from the 12 period EMA. And now we can plot the MACD. I've plotted it as blue. I believe the actual color was orange 
on the other indicator. So I need to change those up in the code. So give me just a moment. There we go. All right, so you can see now our scale is much smaller. We have our difference between these two lines and you can see, of course, the scale, like I mentioned, we're under 500, just like the uh, actual MACD that's built into TradingView. So this is our MACD line. This is the moving average convergence divergence line. And you notice there was another line we referred to as the signal line. And that is just a nine period exponential moving average of this orange line. And we can show that now because we've already calculated that. We use the built-in exponential moving average function and we calculated the EMA of that MACD line, not the price, over nine periods back. And we save that as a signal, but we're gonna plot the signal as blue now. So let's save those changes. And there you go. So now we have that and you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. You can see as the momentum on the price built up, the shorter period moving average went up quicker than the slower period moving average. So the MACD line went up and you can tell it's a little bit more jagged. So the signal line is sort of a smooth line of the MACD and because of that it lags behind the MACD which is why up here when the MACD peaked and it went down below the signal line the signal line was still kind of moving up because its movements lag behind because it's averaged in from the last nine periods of this line and really doesn't have as much to do with the uh, current price uh, as far as how it relates to the MACD itself. So that's something to keep in mind. You can kind of catch when momentum can shift if you notice these dips on the MACD line itself, even if it doesn't result in a crossover. Uh, it can indicate that the lines are going to get closer if the price does start to drop and maybe you can get an idea of what's about to happen judging on that and other indicators that you use at the same time. So now we have our MACD and our signal line and we can identify crossovers and we can identify movements and on the built-in indicator there is a horizontal line plotted at the zero line and uh, crossovers above zero tend to be uh, cross ups, I should say, that make the above the signal tend to be bullish above that and below that they tend to be bearish if they cross down. But uh, there's many ways to do that and we'll discuss all those in a moment. But the main thing we have to discuss now is there's one more feature of the MACD indicator that we haven't talked about yet and that's the histogram. And all the histogram is is the difference from the MACD line to the signal line that it creates with its uh, nine period EMA. And I've already done that. And if you're curious about the code and you followed my PineScript tutorial development series, you'll notice there's a little bit of interesting code here. And it just says that we're going to make the color of this green if our histogram is above zero and red if it's below. So we're going to head and save this. Now we can see that on the chart. I'll zoom out so you can get a better idea of what's going on. You can tell when the MACD goes under the signal line the histogram turns red and based on how far below it is that's how low the histogram goes. So that is another part of the MACD that's basically everything. Now I'm pretty much just going to read off some of the important things from this Investopedia article because it's really good and gives you a lot of great information on how to actually use the MACD and how you can use it to determine uh, potential buy and sell signals. So let's go ahead and take a look at this again. Uh, there's a lot of great information in this, so I really recommend you check this out. Um, the MACD is often displayed with a histogram, which we just talked about, which graphs the difference between the MACD and the signal. We just did that. And you use the histogram to identify when bullish or bearish momentum is high. So you can see on this indicator with the MACD, the histogram, the bearish momentum was very high as the histogram increased to levels relatively high to elsewhere on the chart and the same can be said for the bullish momentum when it is higher on the positive side versus relative areas uh, on the MACD as well. So the limitations of the MACD and this happens quite often is that it can produce false positives and essentially that means if you're looking to trade the MACD and you're looking for crossovers a lot of times you'll have a crossover but the price won't act in the way that you would expect that crossover to actually happen. So 
For example, here is a good one. You can see the MACD line crosses under the signal line here. And the MACD and the signal line pretty much stay level, but the price goes up. And if you were to try and trade that cross under and you thought it was bearish here, the price would have continued up. Not only that, the price barely moved down here and it crossed back up up here. So you would have lost considerably, especially if you were trading on margin in this example. So that's an example of a false positive you can see on the MACD, and this happens a lot. Other ones uh, occur when, let's see, there's one here. There is a bullish crossover here, but you can see the price pretty much stays flat. And this is another example of a false positive where there's a crossover, but the lines just kind of tend to move and hover and just kind of grind their way back to zero as the exponential moving averages kind of level out and meet each other again. So those are things you should watch out for and why the MACD is often used with other indicators to help identify momentum changes uh, that can be coming or have just occurred. So let's continue on with this article. I just talked about this. It is a slowdown in the momentum. That's the one I just mentioned where uh, sideways movement or slow trending movement causes the MACD to pull away from its extreme positions. Let me go back to here. So it was way down here. The price went sideways and it slowly went back up. That's what it's referring to here. Now, one of the other things we can talk about here, of course, are the crossovers and it's showing that a bit here yeah these are the crossovers we've already mentioned this but when you have a bullish crossover while the trend is already going up and you're above the zero line it's often very bullish and shows a lot of positive momentum the same can be said for a bearish trend uh, bearish cross down I should say when it crosses downward then of course it is confirming the bullish trend, or excuse me, the bearish trend. You can see the price is uh, moving down in a bearish way here. So when the crossover confirms here, that is basically saying that is a bearish confirmation and the momentum should continue down from there. Now there are also examples of divergence. There are plenty of resources on divergence and I'm not going to read this word for word, but essentially you look for divergences from how the price moves versus how the indicator is moving. So you can see here the price is moving down, but the indicator is bottoming upwards. So it's finding higher bottoms. The price is finding lower bottoms. So it's, it kind of indicates that the price moving down is kind of running out of momentum. You find this divergence and it could be good for indicating when the direction of the price can turn around. In this case, it's bullish. And in this case, it's bearish. <coughs> Excuse me. Price goes up while the indicator tops out going down and it confirms and the price continues to go down. That is an example of a bearish divergence on the MACD. Now there are also rapid rises and rapid falls that you can use. I won't read this entirely, but it kind of gives you an idea of when things are overbought. You can see there was a huge jump on the MACD here, but when you use this with other indicators, you can also tell that it is overbought and it might be a good time to actually sell there. Or when there was another rapid rise here, it might be another opportunity to sell here when other indicators also indicate that it's overbought. So this shows an example with the RSI. We'll do a video about that later as well. But for now, we're just focusing on the MACD and you can just keep an eye out for those rapid rises on the MACD, especially after continued trends like that. And as the MACD stays above, it might indicate that momentum is running out as there is a quick rise up. And it's also a good time to look for those divergences as well. So that pretty much covers it for this video. If you like the video, please like. If you like these types of videos, please subscribe to the channel. We have all kinds of videos about other indicators. And we also do a tutorial series on PineScript for TradingView so that you can learn to create indicators like we did in this particular video to uh, basically come up with your own indicator or create your own strategy. That is something that we also do in that series. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe and check out that video series.
Otherwise, you can also check out my TradingView profile. We have tons of scripts. I also post some ideas occasionally, but I'm mostly focused on development, so I don't post a whole lot of ideas. But you can see all the scripts that I've created. We have tons of likes on a lot of these scripts and uh, got several followers now on the account building up the reputation. Please check out the profile and if you like anything you see, please like that of course. But other than that, thank you and have a nice day.